This is your second quiz year five that you could play with friends, family, or classmates or by yourself. Um, if you haven't seen the first game, then you can go back into YouTube, search for Mrs. Ostutors and you can find it there. So grab yourself a pen or a pencil. After each round, I will go through all the answers. There's two rounds, eight questions in each. Off we go. Round one, question one. Can you add these two numbers represented in Roman numerals and give your answer in Roman numerals? After each question, I'll give a brief pause. And if you'd like longer, just press pause to give yourself enough time to work out the answer. Question two, please something the tree into the something. You see a pair of homophones at the bottom. Can you place the correct homophone in the correct location within the sentence? Question three, do you know the name of this flower? Question four, what is this number rounded to the nearest thousand? Question five, which country's flag is this? Question six, we've got a fidget spinner here. I would like you to work out the perimeter of it if each side measures 2.7 centimetres. Question seven, which of these three words is an antonym for malice? Linger, abandon or kindness? Final question of the first round. Lily carefully counted the crumpled notes and loose coins in her hand before sighing and putting back the more expensive necklace she had been admiring at the jewellery store. From this sentence, what can you infer about Lily's financial situation and how she might be feeling? And how do you know? Okay, that's the end of round one. If you'd like to go back and look at any of the questions, go for it. Otherwise, the answers are coming up. Question one. So the first number, X represents 10, and then we have one before V. I before V means one less than five, which is four. 10 plus four is 14. The second number, the X, is of a smaller value than the C because X is worth 10, C is worth 100. We know in Roman numerals when the smaller value comes before, that means we subtract that amount. So we have 10 less than 100, which is 90. Then we have VI, which is one more than 5, which is 6. Put that together is 96. Then you can add 14 and 96 which makes 110, and put that back into Roman numerals. This time the X would come after the C because it's 10 more than 100. Please haul the tree into the hall. So if you haul something, you're pulling it with some effort. So maybe it's a large Christmas tree and the hall is uh, a place. Uh, I can see there's a missing full stop there. So I hope you remembered your full stop. This is lavender. Check your spelling. It's E-R at the end. It often catches people out. What is 674,936 rounded to the nearest thousand? Well, if we're rounding to the nearest thousand, there will only be zeros in the ones, tens and hundreds position. And we would be looking at the digit in the hundreds position to tell us whether the four that's in the thousands position will stay at four or if it will go up to five. Now, five and above, we know we round up. The nine in the hundreds position tells us we're rounding up. So the four rounds up to five. So our answer is 675,000. This is the flag of Japan and it represents the rising sun in the middle. Um, the land of the rising sun, and also the sun goddess Amaterasu. There were eight sides. This is an octagonal shape. 
so we needed to multiply 2.7 by 8. You can do that using column method. Remember when we multiply with decimals, the number of digits in the question that are after a decimal point is how many digits will be after a decimal point in the answer. So we know it's going to be 21.6. There's only going to be one digit after the decimal point because there's only one digit after the decimal point in 2.7 times 8, the 7. You could also use approximation and think it's roughly 3 times 8. So it's going to be somewhere around 24. It's not going to be as big as 240 and it's not going to be as small as 2.4. Malice is a, is a cruel emotion, so the opposite of it would be kindness. To linger is to hang about, perhaps like a bad smell, and to abandon something is to leave it. So it was neither of those. Finally, Lily carefully counted the crumpled notes and loose coins in her hand before sighing and putting back the more expensive necklace she had been admiring at the jewellery store. Hopefully you had managed to write a, a, a quite a lengthy explanation to say what you thought and why you thought it. This is a suggestion. Lily may not have enough money to buy the necklace she wanted, which suggests she is on a tight budget or unable to afford expensive items. She might be feeling disappointed or frustrated that she cannot purchase something she admired. We could also add some evidence for this. The fact that she's carefully counting the coins um, and that it mentions that the necklace is expensive and she returns it. Uh, is some evidence that you could include. So add up your scores so far. If you're playing with someone, compare, pause here before we start round two. Round two, question one. Can you write two different sentences using this word? In one sentence, you're going to use this word as a verb, and in the other sentence, you're going to use it as a noun. Question two, can you work out the area of this combined shape? So there's two sections to the shape. Work out the area of each, add them together. What is the total? Question three, which country has a capital city of Madrid and on which continent is it located? Question four, what is the angle between the two hands on this clock? Question five, do you know what this symbol is? Question six, bit of a fun fact. Do you know what comets might smell like? Do they smell of sausages, of rotten eggs or of vanilla? What do you think? Have a guess. Question seven. I am a word that shows how possible or necessary something is, such as might or will. What am I? Question eight. Two balls to choose from, a football and a tennis ball, but which one is cheaper? Pause here if you'd like some extra working out time or to go back before I move on to the answers. OK. Question one. The word is produce or produce. The emphasis depends on if you're using it as a noun or a verb. So in the first sentence, I produce a rabbit from the hat means I'm pulling a rabbit or taking a rabbit or making a rabbit from the hat. They sell produce. In the grocer's shop, you hear the emphasis is on the first syllable, produce, or produces things like fruit and vegetables that we might buy in a shop. You may have written a different sentence, but as long as you meant something similar, then um, you've got it correct. So you may have noticed that the shape of the square was the easiest to work out, so I worked that out first. Both sides would be six centimeters because it's a square. I know to find the area, I multiply the width by the length. So the area of the square would be six times six equals 36 centimeters squared. Then I can see the area of the rectangle is going to be 8.5 centimeters multiplied by three centimeters. 
similar uh, column method multiplication of decimals as we did earlier. So we know we need to put one digit after the decimal point, making 25.5 centimeters. Then if we add those two together, we can find out the area of the total shape, which is 61.5 centimeters squared. Make sure you had centimeters squared as your units to get full marks here. Question three. The capital city of Spain is Madrid, and Spain is in the, on the continent of Europe. There are 360 degrees, if we go all the way around a circle. The distance between these two hands will be exactly a third of that, because we have broken the clock face into three equal parts with the position of these hands. 360 divided by three, would be 120 degrees. This is a treble clef. Looks a bit like a fancy G, and in music it helps musicians know which notes they're playing. A comet actually smells like rotten eggs, or urine, or burning matches, or even almonds, and it's because of the chemicals um, that surround them, one of which is sulfur dioxide, which gives it its powerful smell. Question seven, these are all modal verbs. Question eight, got two balls. So, to work out 20% discount on the 45 pound ball, first of all, the easiest step is to work out 10%, which is just a 10th. So place value, dividing 45 by 10, we could move, imagine moving it one move jump along in the place value chart, making four pounds 50. But we don't want 10%, we want 20%. So we want two lots of that. So we're going to double that, making nine pounds. Then we can subtract that nine pounds from the 45 pounds, telling us that the reduced cost of the football is 36 pounds. Now, to reduce the cost of the tennis ball, very expensive tennis ball, by 15%, first of all, we'll work out 10% in just the same way, dividing by 10, 10% is four pounds. If we halve that, we'll know what 5% is, which would then be two pounds. Add those both together would tell us what a 15% discount of 40 pounds in, and that's six pounds. Finally, remove the six pounds from the 40 pounds, giving us a cost of 34 pounds. So the tennis ball is cheaper, it's 34 pounds. Add up all of your scores, compare them with your friends. I hope you learned something from your quiz today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mrs. Osh Tutors, for lots more videos, and please share it with friends. Thank you for playing.